Well, good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, Corey just suggested we move worship out to the lobby because that's where everybody is. <laughs> the piano is just a little too hard to get out there. Uh, this is our third Sunday of Advent. This is Peace Sunday. It's also Creative Sweater Sunday, formerly known as Ugly Sweater Sunday. So I think we're going to have a mix of ugly sweaters and creative sweaters uh, today as we transition to our creative uh, sweater. So glad that you're here. And we're going to light three candles on the Advent wreath today. First, we have our hope candle and the love candle. And today we light the peace candle. Whoops. There we go. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today, and we thank you for Advent, and we celebrate how you came to be one of us and give your life for us, Lord, and rose from the dead, and we celebrate that you are coming again to set things right, to turn this world around right. And so we worship you, we praise you today, and Lord, I, pr I pray for our worship team and our, t our tech crew and everyone, Lord, that we would bring you glory and honor and praise as we sing and pray and get into your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord. All right, let's stand. we 
over the whole earth, echoing his eminence. His name would burst from sea and sky, from the rivers to the mountain tops. We hear Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. From the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. When every creature finds its inmost melody, every human heart its native cry oh then one in raptured him of praise we'll sing christ be magnified oh christ be magnified let his praise arise, for Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. Oh, let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. you and if it puts me in the fire I'll rejoice because you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I'll hold fast to what is true and if the cross brings transformation I'll be crucified with you because death is just a doorway into resurrection life if I join you in your sufferings, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing and my song will be the same. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified. Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. Well, let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. From the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me.
Lord Jesus, today we magnify your name. We lift it up. We magnify your name, Jesus. And Lord, we our desire of heart is that you would be magnified from the altar of our very lives, Father. Lord, we thank you so much for who you are today. Father, we come with open hearts and open minds today to receive all that you have for us. Let the peace of God that passes all knowledge guard our hearts, guard our minds in this place as we lift up your name. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to worship on uh, our creative Christmas sweater Sunday. And I've been looking around, and the competition's pretty fierce. Uh, (laughs) Let's greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship. Uh, Just a couple of announcements, actually quite a few announcements, but we'll try to get them uh, through quickly. You're all invited to coffee hour right after worship, and uh, if you order script today, Kathy said the script will be back next Sunday, so if you're wanting script for Christmas stocking stuffers or gifts, see Kathy. Oh, Kathy's here. All right, you can see Kathy in the back there. Uh, I always want to mention the gift of hope at rca.org. If you'd like to help uh, send a goat or a chicken or a cow to someone in a development nation, you can do that through rca.org. The puppet show is next week on Friday and Saturday. And actually, I need help with greeters on Friday or Saturday. So if you could be a greeter, uh, let me know after worship today. Our congregational meeting is next Sunday, right after worship, and if you get the newsletter in your email, uh, this week I mailed out the docket. It has our, um, who's being nominated for uh, elder and deacon, and it has the budget, and it has our asset report, so you can get all that, and I'll send that out again this week. Uh, Next Sunday is my favorite Advent Sunday. Uh, is Christmas Cookie Sunday. Yay! So uh, bring some cookies, and it says bring a dozen. I would say bring more than a dozen because we want to eat some, all right? But the idea, if you bring a dozen, you take a dozen. You take, you know, it's like a cookie exchange type of thing, but you got to bring more than a dozen, really, right? Because we're going to eat some. So 
bring some cookies, take home some cookies. Uh, we are, Christmas Eve is coming up before we know it. Uh, the service will be at 5.30 and, uh, on Christmas Eve. And then December 25th is on a Sunday this year. So we will have worship on Christmas Day. And guess what? The next week we have Christmas on New Year's Day. Uh, worship, right? Oh, Chris, I said Christmas. I meant to say worship. Um, thank you. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, so uh, you want to behave yourself on, on New Year's Eve. All right, so you can come to church on New Year's Day at, at 9.30. We talked about having a later service, but no, it'll be at 9.30. So behave yourself on New Year's Eve. All right, we have a pastor search team announcement today. Who's Carol is doing that? Okay. As long as you're up here, <laughs> just demonstrate your. Uh, okay, you'll have to hold this. Here we go. Look, <laughs> well, Carol is a wreath. Yes, I'm, I'm a wreath. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and I just got a text from my husband. If anybody's watching the or follow, been following the uh, uh, Artemis, uh, uh, it, the touchdown. Orion has just touched down um, off of the coast of Baja California. So. Um, yeah, so that's pretty big news. Tom's been following it, so I just he j just popped up on a text. So okay. if anybody was wondering, it's found ended. So, um, so our our search team uh, continues to work forward on uh, the plan that God has for us. Uh, we are interviewing or have interviewed several people, and each time we interview someone, you know, we have to form answers to their questions. We have to. Um, ask our questions in ways to get to the information we need, and we learn something every time, every question, every conversation, and it just brings us that much closer to the plan that God has for us as individuals, each of us, as for our church, um, and for our lives going forward. This is uh, real pivotal for our life of our church to be searching for our third pastor in the life of our church. So uh, we are interviewing. Um, we have several candidates, and there are different stages along the way. And we've just um, been really, um, it's been neat to, to get to know other people about their um, ministries, about their churches, where they're coming from, their backgrounds. And, um, and it just like points out our lives will, going forward as a church will be changing. And it's exciting to see what God has planned for us. So that's our update. Um, we have more that we'll be sharing with you at the update next week in the way of um, things that we've been learning. Uh, Julie's already shared about the book around um, uh, part-time pastors and uh, the book that she shared. We want to share a little bit more about that as well because um, it's just so much information and we want to kind of break some of that down for all of you. So, okay. Thanks, Carol. All right, are you ready? We've got the coveted Creative Sweater Award, a fabulous prize. Yeah, Carol could have just waited up there. And uh, so we've got to really set the mood, I have a video for us, uh, but it says Ugly Sweater. So just forgive me, it's not Ugly Sweater Sunday, it's Creative Sweater Sunday, but I had to use the video as it was. I didn't want to make a new one, so. <laughs> Mama, don't make me wear that old thing again Handmade Christmas trees and a silly snowman No matter if I refuse I got them ugly sweater blues <laughs> Okay, so if you have a creative sweater on come on up and uh, we have some uh, anonymous judges out there in the congregation and if anything needs to be explained about your sweater we'll give you a chance to do that shopping. you're shopping okay <laughs> all right come on come on okay body shopping 
Carol's a reef. Any other explanations? Uh, Shannon is the fruit of the Spirit. We got Mrs. Santa Claus right over here. Uh, Steve, are we getting everybody on camera? Or do we need them to move over? Yeah, you can move to the edge more, sure. Okay, gather more by the piano side, yeah. So you guys come on over this way. You got to be on this side of the pulpit. Yeah. And we got Twyla. <laughs> Twyla says, this is my ugly sweater. All right. All right, and, and Charlie, if you can take a picture of us, that would be great. <laughs> all right, and Joyce is all lit up here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, candy canes, all right. Okay, we're going to have you turn a little bit here. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right, Charlie's going to get a picture, so you want to look over by Charlie? <laughs> Happy Christmas. All right, thanks, Charlie. And just stay here for a minute. I'll see what our judges are. Our all right, what do we have for the most creative Christmas sweater? <laughs> Carol, yeah! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, Carol's got a, a wonderful, fabulous prize there. If you're her friend, she might share with you. I don't, I don't know. Thank you all. Give yourselves a big hand. All right. And then we, we do need to pray after this. <laughs> there we go. One at a time. <laughs> yeah. Bev, are you going to pray? All right. It was hard, wasn't it, judges? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, Bev, would you like to come up? There you go. Good morning, people of hope. I can, I can smile at everybody now because I took my mask off for a second. And I know you all are smiling too behind your mask, so I'll just assume that's the case. Okay, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your many, many gifts that love and hope and joy and peace and so many things come from you. We tend to thank you for material things in a lot of cases and for getting what we want in a lot of cases. But really, we want to focus on you, Lord, that joy comes from the awareness of your presence. That is how we can be joyful no matter the circumstances that it's not about being happy and having things go the way we want. It's really about joy being in knowing God is here and through the people that he puts around us and through the circumstances and nature and music and all the things that he gives us that don't cost anything that we can just appreciate every day. 
it was such joy in everyone just having fun just now with the sweaters and the costumes and and just the fellowship that we had and being fun and silly. We thank you, Lord, for this group of people that can fellowship together, that is sticking together, and that is waiting to see what you have in store next, Lord. We pray for the pastor search team and who you will show them is the next pastor. But we also pray for the congregation, Lord, that this is going to be a change and things will be different. So we pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts and minds and make us willing to accept what is the next thing. Let us just be hopeful in what you are going to bring next, what changes are going to be happening, and that they will be good and they'll be from you. We know that there are so many people that are suffering right now for one reason or another. There's illness and loneliness and family issues. Lord, we just lift them up for healing. We know that you are the great healer. And I just pray that they would have the joy of knowing that you are present in their lives. Particularly Peggy's brother, Luray, who is really lost his will to live. He's got multiple health problems and he's just giving up. So Lord, just somehow show him your presence. We also pray for Marianne Weiland, who is still struggling. She's, she's home. They've got some of the swelling down in her legs, but there's still other issues with the congestive heart failure. So Lord, just wrap your arms around her and give Jill strength to take care of her and be there for her. We also lift up the Chitwoods, Lord, that you, we know that they are strong believers. We just lift them up knowing that you can minister to them and that all of us can reach out in love towards them. We also lift up Bonnie, Petrolina, and Lorraine. We know it's difficult to care for people that have memory loss. We pray for Bonnie that that will slow down and we pray for Lorraine that she will have patience to deal with the taking care of someone constantly. Lord, no matter how much we love people, it's difficult to be a caregiver. So we give, we just ask for your extra strength for her and that people will reach out to her in both of them in love. And Lord, we're going back to joy, let's just be joyful of what we can do over in the Maasai. We will be taking on next year the salary of one of the workers in the clinic. And we just thank you for the joy that you have given us in being able to watch that journey of all the water wells being built and the people coming to know you, Lord. And now that there's a clinic that amazing, miraculous things have happened in that community. And we give you all the praise and we just are grateful that we can be a part of that and see what you are doing there. Lord, I know there's other issues in this congregation and people listening. We need to keep some of our other members who are not here today that are watching on the live that they can't be here in person. And we wish that we could give them hugs and reach out to them. So I would just pray that people would text them, call them, and send cards this Christmas to those that we haven't seen in a while because they've moved or because they have illnesses that keep them away. So Lord, we know that you are always present. Let us be aware of your presence and be joyful and share that joy for pe with people who need some of that to rub off on them. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go forth in joy.
Now, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. We've been talking about God's wonderful gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the gifts Christ brings into our lives, the gifts of hope and love and joy and today peace. I'm going to start with a verse to talk about peace that we usually use to talk about hope. It's a familiar verse. I hope it's familiar to you. I hope you know it by now. It's Romans 15, 13. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I usually use this verse to talk about hope because we're Hope Community Church. But if we're going to get to this overflowing with hope part, which we want to, right? We want to overflow with hope. If we're going to get there, look what it says. It says, uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Our hope comes from being filled with joy and peace. So Lord, fill us today with your joy and peace that we would overflow with your hope. Amen? So the next indescribable gift, the gift of peace. That's on your Christmas list for today, and I need uh, Steve and Ron to help me again. I've got thank you cards for everybody and pens if you need them. So Ron, if you can raise your hand if you want a pen, and Steve will bring everybody a card. So this is for your Christmas gift list. Today the gift is peace. So when you get that card, write on the front of the card, peace. And then open it up and write inside, thank you, Lord, for the gift of peace. So on the front, peace. Inside, thank you, Lord, for the gift of peace. Now, the last two Sundays, I asked you to think about a person who could use the gift of hope or a person who could use the gift of love. And this morning, it could be a person again, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. And uh, like I said, if a person comes to mind, great. But I want you to think of a situation, a situation where some peace is needed. Maybe it's a conflict you know about. Uh, Maybe it's an issue in your family. Maybe it's something at work. Maybe it's in your neighborhood, or maybe it's in our world today, or maybe it's even in the church. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Think of a situation where peace is needed. Be thinking about that as we talk together about peace this morning. So on the front, peace. Inside, thank you, Lord, for the gift of peace. And then be thinking about a situation where peace is needed, or a person who needs some peace in their life. You know, there's a famous prayer from St. Francis of Assisi that uh, many of us probably know. know. The prayer is, Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. Where there is doubt, true faith in you. Where there is despair, hope. Where there's darkness, only light. Where there is sadness, ever joy. O Master, grant that I may never seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. For it is in giving that we receive, it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Do you know that prayer? If you don't know it, that's a good one. And we're going to pray that together at the end of the sermon today. Make me a channel of your peace. That's what this morning is all about, us being channels of God's peace. Because the idea is we're re-gifting the gifts that God has given us. So God gives us his peace, we're going to re-gift that. We're going to give that away to others. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if you found peace with God, you are to be a peacemaker. You share it with others. You know, in the gospel, we hear in Matthew 10 and Luke 10, it's interesting, they're both in the same chapter, uh, it tells about Jesus sending out his followers to spread the good news that the kingdom is here. And Jesus tells them that uh, to go out into the communities and to share God's peace. 
wherever they go. And he, but he warned them. He said, not everyone's going to be open to receiving God's peace. They might even oppose God's peace. So he says, uh, if you go into a town and they receive the peace you're sharing, share some more. If they don't receive it, say bye, see you later, <laughs> and find somebody who does receive it. He sent his followers out on a mission, a peace mission. Jesus came on a mission to share God's peace with the world. And we are to follow him in that mission. And we, d we just sang about it, didn't we? Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and say that last line with me, Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. But Jesus was pretty clear that when he talked about peace, God's peace, it's something different than what we usually think of when we think of peace. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. It's a different kind of peace peace. And so where are we going this morning in this message? Here's where we're going. First of all, what exactly is the peace that God brings to us that Jesus is talking about? How is it different? How, then how does that lead to overflowing hope? How does having this peace lead to overflowing hope? Then how can we share this peace with others? And then last, I'm going to talk about why are some people opposed to Jesus's message of peace. Okay, ready to go? That's where we're going. So what is this peace? How is it not like the peace the world gives? What kind of peace are we talking about here? It's important to define our terms. I'm going to tell you a story this morning, probably my most embarrassing story. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I was 14 or 15 years old, and it was in the height of the Vietnam War, and we were having a peace march in our community. We all had candles, and we had peace signs, and we, it was the more, I don't know if you remember the moratoriums that were held, but we had the black armbands. And we're marching down the street with our candles, and everybody's calling out slogans and cheers. And I thought, I could do that too. So I yell out, give me a P! Give me an I! Give me an E. Give me a C. Give me an E. What's that spell? <laughs> yeah, what do we want? And everybody's quiet. My friend looks at me and he goes, Norman, what are you doing? We want peace to end the war. We don't want a piece of pie. So let's be clear about our terms, okay? We're not talking about a piece of pie today. We're talking about peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E, peace. But in the Bible, peace is spelled a bit different. In the Bible, peace is spelled S-H-A-L-O-M. Shalom. Have you heard the word shalom before? The, the Bible word, the Old Testament Bible word for peace is a Jewish word, Hebrew word, shalom. And among Jewish people, it's a common greeting, shalom. It's like, good day. It's like, uh, aloha. In fact, if you, many Jewish people, they'll say, shalom alechem, which means, peace be unto you. And then the answer it back is, alechem sholom, which is, unto you, peace. And this actually has come over into Christianity. If you've been to Mass or some Reformed churches, they're a bit more liturgical than we are. Someone will stand up in front, usually the pastor or the priest, and the, they'll say, peace be with you, and also with you. It's, it's, it's the same greeting. Shalom Aleichem, Aleichem Sholem. When Jesus appeared to the disciples after he rose from the dead in the upper room, guess what the first thing he said to them was? Peace, peace be with you, which I'm pretty sure was 
Shalom Aleichem. Peace be with you. It's a common greeting. It's a nice greeting. Wouldn't it be nice if we all greeted each other nicely in this world today? <laughs> what a change up that would be. But there's more packed into this word, shalom, than just a nice greeting. There's a lot more to it. And, you know, when we think of peace, I think we usually think of the absence of war, right? We think of the absence of conflict, conflict ceasing. You know, we just talked about the peace movement in the 60s with all the peace symbols and the peace signs and the doves. And shalom can mean that kind of peace. Shalom can mean no fighting. It can mean serenity. Shalom can mean calm. But it doesn't necessarily mean that. Wow. It doesn't necessarily mean the absence of conflict. It can mean that. But there's a deeper meaning. And I think that's what Jesus is getting at. There's a shalom peace, a peace that passes understanding, a peace that's not like the peace of the world. It's a peace that can be present even in the midst of conflict. It's a peace that can be present even when things are not serene. It's a peace that can be present when you're in the midst of the storm. So it's interesting, the root word for shalom, it has to do with restoration. It has to do with wholeness. It has to do with right relationships. Let me give an, I'm going to give two examples, actually, from the Old Testament. And we're not going to turn there. You can look at this later if you want. But if you go to Exodus chapters 20 and 21, uh, it's a big, long list about what you do with the, in the law if somebody has wronged you. And like there's one section in there, like if somebody has um, hurt your ox, has messed up your ox, you know, <laughs> I, don't know I don't know what you do to hurt an ox, but tripped up your ox, I don't know. what. But uh, there's been a problem. And they say all these things about how to make it right, that you'll pay for it, you'll make it right, you'll make restitution. How, how can we restore this? And um, the word there used over and over again is the root word for shalom. How do, how do you pay it back? How do you make it right? How do you fix the breach? How do we get back in right relationship again? Now, a verse we will turn to, this is Genesis 43, 27 to 28. Now, Joseph, remember the story of Joseph, that he was sold into slavery uh, by his brothers. And when he connects back with his brothers, he's the, ru uh, the assistant ruler of all of Egypt. He's in, actually really in charge of everything for the pharaoh. And his brothers don't even recognize him. And so he, he doesn't let on right away who he is. That comes later. And they are restored. They are brought back together. But it, when he asks about his father to his brothers, it says, then he asked them ab about their well-being and said, is your father well? The old man of whom you speak, is he still alive? And they answered, your servant, our father is in good health. He's still alive. Well, all those well-being well in good health that I have in yellow there, all shalom. So are you getting kind of the sense of peace? It's well-being, it's wholeness, it's right relationship. And it can happen when things are anything but calm. Uh, you can be at peace in a conflict because you've done what's right even if the other person doesn't do what's right. Is that kind of, I don't think we think of it that way. We, we want the conflict to cease, but we can have peace, the peace of God, if we do the right thing, even if the person next to us is doing the wrong thing. Second Thessalonians 3.16, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way, all times even in the crazy times. In every way, God, bring it on, any way you can. <laughs> Let me be in right relationship with you. Let me be in right relationship with my brothers and sisters, even if everything's going crazy around me. You know, when we've confessed our sin, when we've turned from sin and we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean we won't mess up. 
It doesn't mean we're better than anybody else. You know what it means? It means that we've been restored with our Heavenly Father, that we are part of His family, and we have found peace with God. And how did we find peace with God? We finally surrendered to His rule and reign, that He would rule and reign in our lives, that His kingdom would come in our lives. See, it's in surrendering to His Lordship. That's how we find peace. We quit fighting God and surrender to God. Now, how does this get to the overflowing hope? Well, when we surrender to God and we're at peace with God, that peace starts to grow into trust. And we start to understand that we can trust God, that we can count on God to keep his promises, that God promises to bring shalom, God promises to bring wholeness, restoration to the whole world. And with that promise, can you see how that just overflows into hope? Peace with God overflows into hope. Because no matter ba how bad things get, we know that God has promised to turn it around right. And we're at peace with God because we have hope and we know that he's turning us around right in Jesus. And this overflows into peace with others. We can be at peace with other people. Now, we know this in our head. I don't think we always know it in our heart. <laughs> so just, I'm going to say this two times. Our problem is not with other people. <laughs> do, you agree? do you believe that? You think, oh, no, you don't know the other people in my life. But just let me tell you, the Bible says <laughs> your problem's really not with other people. Our problem is with the systems and structures and powers that blind and corrupt and lead other people astray. You see the difference there? It's not really with that person. It's what's gotten a hold of that person or they've let get a hold of them. It's about powers and structures and systems that are working overtime to bring conflict and uh, disruption and, bad, and break relationships. Now, I kind of promised myself I wouldn't talk about Twitter or Facebook. I'm not going to go there. Do I have to go there to talk about a structure that causes a lot of conflict or is used to, is, you hear what I'm saying? Ephesians 6, 12. Our struggle's not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. That's where our problem is. And then Romans talks more about this. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful what's to do what's right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it's written, it's mine to avenge, I'll repay says the Lord. So our problem is not with that other person. It's not, it's not my responsibility, it's not your responsibility to pay evil for evil, to get an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. We're, we're responsible to do what's right in God's sight. God's going to take care of any punishment that has to happen. We don't want to get in his way. That's what, just leave room. Don't mess it up. That's not your job. As far as it is possible with you, live at peace. And I think we need to hear that too because I can do everything right and maybe they don't receive the peace. Maybe they don't want peace. Maybe they don't respond in peace. I can't control that. But as far as it's possible, what I can control in my life, I can do what's right in the sight of God. So I'm not responsible for how others respond to the shalom, but I am responsible for how I respond and how I share the gift of shalom. Now, doesn't mean I'm going to be a doormat. Doesn't mean I'm going to let people walk all over me. It doesn't mean I can't disagree or complain or stand my ground on an issue. It doesn't mean I have to put up with evil. But it does mean that in my heart, I want to have God's heart, and I'm looking for restoration. 
I'm looking for healing. I'm looking for things to be made right. And that's driving me more than my desire to see them pay <laughs> or to see them suffer for what they've done or that I would be right, to prove that I'm right. Isn't that what happens in conflict so often? We, or I'm right. I want them to know I'm right. Well, how about not being right and being righteous? Not being worried about being right, but being righteous. Now, is that easy? Help me out here. Is that easy? No. Uh, just look to Jesus. I don't think going to the cross was very easy. It was pretty hard. He paid a price he did not owe. He gave himself for others. It was not easy. But was it right? Was it righteous? Was it good? Was he making peace as far as it was possible with him? Yes, it was. He gave himself to set things right between us and God and each other. So this gift I'm talking about putting on your Christmas list, the gift of peace, it can be a bit scary. And it can be a bit costly. But I'll just let you know, if it's God's peace, God's shalom, if it's Jesus' peace that we're sharing, it's always right. It's always good. So I hope you've been thinking, as I've been talking, about a situation where there's needs that needs some shalom, or maybe a person that needs some shalom, needs some wholeness, needs restoration, needs a relationship restored, needs to be made right. And if you haven't, be thinking. And when you think of somebody or some situation, just write that down on your peace card. This is your continued Christmas shopping list. <laughs> How, who or what situation needs the gift of peace? And as you're doing that, I'm just going to share a couple of thoughts about sharing peace, how we can share peace. Uh, first thing is just is pray. Pray. Pray about it. And maybe sometimes that's what you do, is you pray. You pray for the person. You pray for the situation. Uh, I would say don't ever jump in and try to share God's gift of peace without sh praying. Pray and talk to God about it. And I'll just add, maybe you want to talk to a mature Christian friend about it too. How can I share the gift of peace? And so there I'm going to jump right into this, my other idea about how to share it. And I shared this a bit in the Lord's Prayer sermon, but I'll share it again today because I think it's important. Uh, pick up one of the peacemaking flyers on the information table today. Uh, look at the four G's of peacemaking. You know, uh, pray about this and seek God. How can God, how, God, how can you be glorified in this situation? Uh, Lord, is there a log in my own eye? Get the log out of my own eye. Is the reason for this conflict, what, what part do I play in the conflict? You know, gently restore. Lord, I do want restoration in this. I don't want vengeance. I don't want to prove that I'm right. I really want things to be made whole. Help me do that. And maybe that's where I get a brother or sister to help me, coach me in that. In fact, you might remember we have some people trained in peacemaking here in our church. Uh, Carol and Steve and Shannon all have been trained in how to coach people in how to work through uh, reconciliation and make peace. And then the last one is go and be reconciled. Take the chance, step out, actively pursue peace. So uh, pick up a peacemaking pamphlet and I will try to remember to make that into a PDF and put that in the newsletter too. Um, but the last thing I want to talk about, we can do all of that and still some people are going to reject the gift of peace. And I, you know, we talked about the gift of hope, the gift of love, next week the gift of joy, but I think sometimes when we try to bring the gift of peace, there's opposition to it and people just don't want to be reconciled, they don't want things to be put back together again. You know, why, why is that? Because Jesus came to bring peace on earth, didn't he? 
We just sang about it. The angels, you know, we sang about the angels. Hark the herald angels sing the message of peace. Luke 2.14, this is what the angels said. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards all, all people. Jesus came to bring peace, and they rejected Jesus, didn't they? In fact, even when he was a baby, they were trying to wipe him out. Before he could even get started, they're trying to get rid of him. Why? Why? Well, I think it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning about receiving this peace. How do we receive the peace? By surrender. And that's why I think people oppose God's peace. They don't want to surrender. They're not ready to surrender. They're not ready to give God his place as Lord and King of their lives. You know, God accepts us just as we are. He says he accepts all who will call on his name. But when we say the words, Jesus is Lord, that's a confession of surrender. That's, I've surrendered to his way. I'm going to walk on his path. I'm going to turn from my way uh, and my desires and my need to win all the time. And God is the winner. God is in control. And when we offer that to people, peace with God, that's peace with God, surrender to God. Not everybody wants to do that. They say, well, no thanks, that's good for you, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> I'd rather do it my way. You know, the old famous Frank Sinatra song is still being sung today <laughs> in a lot of ways. I'll take care of myself. I'll hope in myself. I'm not going to surrender to God. So when that happens, I just... Jesus warned us, you know, don't be surprised when that happens. Don't, don't take it personally when that happens. And don't let that rejection and attack stop you from sharing God's peace, to stop you from being kind, to stop you from being loving, to stop you from trying to find restoration. Because we can share God's peace in a peaceful way. We can disagree we can go against the tide, we can have different goals, different values, and we can do all of that without being hateful. We can do that without seeking vengeance. We can do that without hurting people. And we can let God take care of the judgment. And we can take care of sharing God's peace in an inviting, kind, loving, caring way. So my prayer for all of us at Hope Community Church is that we would be channels of God's peace, that we would share God's indescribable gift of peace with others. And I hope and pray that there is a situation or a person on your card, and we're going to lift that up in prayer right now. And so I'm going to ask you to pray with me, and we're going to put the prayer up on the screen. If you would pray this out loud with me, this is the prayer of St. Francis. And if you're not familiar with this, you can look it up on the internet and find it. Uh, it's just a great prayer. Let's pray together. Pray out loud with me. Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. Where there is doubt, true faith in you. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, only light. Where there is sadness, ever joy. O Master, grant that I may never seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we're born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Uh, guys, come lead us in our closing. On.
Take this offering that I bring. Humbly I fall on my knees to proclaim your everything. My life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me to. You are my sustaining love. You 
here I am worshiping you with all I am worshiping you bowing down spirit and truth with lifted hands worshiping you here I am worshiping you with all I am worshiping you bowing down in spirit and truth with lifted hands worshiping you